Thank you, Randy. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please take a minute to sign those friendship registers on the side and, and pass them down so that we'll have an idea who was here. And turn to the back of the uh, bulletin and let me go over with you some of the uh, events of the week. Today we'll have coffee hour after the service, so please come over and, and uh, join us there. Tuesday is a busy day. We've got the A&P committee, the stewardship and finance and mission, all meeting, so please take, uh, take note of those times. And next Wednesday, we will have our fourth installment of the Linton Soup and Study Series. It's been going very well. Uh, we've got wonderful cooks, delicious soup, so please uh, make your plans to, to join us for that. Also wanted to let you know that uh, a new Sunday school class has started. It meets after the first service downstairs in the multipurpose room. Ron Hanna and uh, Art Yates are leading a lesson on the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. It's a wonderful class. You don't need to go to everyone. Each lesson is independent. So please feel uh, free to join us there if you can. Easter lilies, it's that time of the year. There's a sign up. Uh, place out in the concierge, so please uh, make your way there, and uh, if you're interested in Easter lilies, and, and get signed up for that. I want to let you know there's going to be a memorial service for Daryl and Sharon Getman on Monday, March the 13th. The service is going to be at the Allen Hardin Funeral Parlor. Last but not least, there's a call session meeting next uh, Sunday for the purpose of taking in new members. We had a wonderful meet and greet group that met with us last Sunday, and uh, they're coming back to meet with the session. If you are interested in joining the church, you feel free to come to that meeting, even if you didn't make the meet and greet. We'd be delighted to have you. Please take note of the prayer concerns and, and keep these folks uh, in your prayers and in your thoughts. I am delighted to let you know, if you can't see him up here behind me, that Mike Andrews is back. So uh, it's wonderful to have him here on many levels. And, and even more important, uh, Dr. Ann Andrews is here with him, keeping him straight. And please keep Ann uh, in your prayers. Uh, not uh, all patients are created equal. <laughs> Now, uh, please join me in the uh, responsive call to worship as printed in the bulletin. We gather here to worship our God. Our God is in Jesus. We come to connect with our God. Our God calls us here. First, we must praise our God. Then let us sing our praises. Our opening <coughs> hymn is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
join me in prayer. Almighty Heavenly Father, your glory and majesty shine before us. All things have been created by you, and your works praise your holy name. Your love and mercy is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who willingly endured the cross for us and paid the price for our sins. And now, hear us, O Lord, as we pray the words Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad, let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like mac wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all peoples see his glory. Now, join me in the prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins before God. Have, have mercy upon us, O God, according, according to your loving kindness, according, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. For we acknowledge our transgressions sin is ever before us. Against you and you only have we sinned and done this evil in your sight. Create in us today a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. May we walk in your paths and speak your words of truth through all our days. We quietly confess our sins. Sin has no power over you, for by God's abundant grace we are forgiven and set free to live in joy and love. Let us praise the Lord.
My goodness, thank you, choir, for the beautiful anthem. Our hymn of praise is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Be seated. We've kind of switched sides today, so I uh, think most of you know I had a uh, defibrillator installed. I guess install is the right word. <laughs> <clears throat> and sometimes along with that comes medic medication. And sometimes it's too much. And I told the early service, I tend sometimes to get dizzy. If I get dizzy, well, y'all go ahead and I'll, I'll catch up with you later. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for your prayers, your cards, your support, your cookies, and all the goodies and things I've shared, but especially your prayers. I appreciate that. Let us join together in prayer now. Lord, what a privilege to come into your presence with thankful hearts. Privilege to come and know of your love and care for us. Privilege to know that you walk with us. And we come before you, Lord, with our concerns, physical, mental, spiritual, domestic. We come with concerns about the problems and concerns of life that we face. We tend to want to have the ability to overcome so many things that beset us, but we need you. We need your guidance. You are aware of our concerns. You're aware of our brokenness. You are aware of our lives that are crying out with your presence. 
Help us and provide for us, we ask. Give us your peace, your way of understanding, the hope that comes in knowing Christ. We pray that you would hear our prayers, answer them, remind them of your hand at work in our lives and of your gracious goodness. We give you thanks for it all. And we make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Won't you please stand and let us affirm our faith as printed in the bulletin using the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sitteth on the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to just the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us continue with our worship as we bring our tithes and offerings before God as an act of worship.
Let us pray. Oh, Lord, you've truly blessed us with so much. And we return a portion back to you, praying that you would take it and use it to bless the lives of others, to proclaim the goodness and love of Jesus Christ, and to build your church. Bless it and bless us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. scripture from the New Testament this morning is from the second chapter of John, verses 1 through 12. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone wash water jugs, the kind used by Jews for some ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some of it and take to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine. After the guests have had too much wine to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. They stayed there for a few days. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, words we need to hear. Speak through your still, small voice. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Three or four weeks ago, I scheduled a series of sermons to preach in Lent, seeking to expose what it was like dealing with Jesus on an everyday basis. Jesus as a friend, Jesus as a teacher, Jesus as a leader, Jesus as a man of prayer, Jesus as Savior. But as the saying goes, if you want to give God a laugh, tell him what your plans are. <laughs> Those plans didn't work out. But I'm starting today preaching that first in the series about what was Jesus like as a friend. And we see him most as a friend when he attends this wet wedding and his disciples were with him, his mother was with him, and an interesting thing happened. First note that Jesus went to a wedding, a wedding party. The weddings then were quite something special. They last for days, sometimes for a week. There was a parade, there were banquets. You would go eat in different homes. You would celebrate, and wine was a, was a basic part of that. Everyone celebrated the wedding, and they celebrated with wine. We notice that uh, 
Joseph was not there. We assumed that Joseph had passed and that Jesus had assumed, assumed responsibilities of the male in the home. But it's interesting how important wine was. Some people say it was watered down wine. We don't know, but whatever the matter is, that Jesus' his mother came to him and said, they've run out of wine. And Jesus said something rather harsh. He said, what does that have to do with me? He said, my time has not yet come. I think of when I was a father of a teenager, if I'd ask him to take out the garbage, and he would say, my time has not yet come, <laughs> I'd make sure it came rather quickly. <laughs> but Jesus really was saying, uh, don't force the hand of God to do something that's not ready. But then they told the, the uh, servants to go get filled with water jars and uh, fill them with water. And then they took them, found out that they were filled with wine. And he took them to the, to the uh, steward of the, of the master of ceremonies, in effect. And he said, this is the best wine yet. This is not of custom. You always serve the best of wine first. I took note, of, note that there were six stone water jars, 20 to 30 gallons each. You're talking about 120, 130 gallons of wine. What kind of a party was that? <laughs> but we know that uh, it was used wisely. Wine was important. As I said, I heard about a man, in, a deacon, Baptist deacon in Georgia who was preaching against wine and against alcohol. And finally one man says, are you aware that Jesus more than likely drank wine? He said, yes, I am. And I've had a hard time forgiving him ever since I heard. <laughs> One preacher went to visit an elder's house and he asked him uh, if he would like a glass of homemade peach brandy. And he said, yes. Yeah. So he drank it and he said, this is really great. I, I like it. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you a bottle of it if you will acknowledge it from the pulpit. He said, okay. So he gave it to him, and next Sunday he stood up and he said, the pastor would like to acknowledge the gift of fruit from one of the elders and for the spirit in which it was given. <laughs> but back to the story, they ran out of wine, which was a real big faux pas. Jesus was able to convert that water into wine. What Je Jesus' mother really was saying is now is the time for you to reveal yourself, to show who you really are. And perhaps his mother was pushy, and someone said he was a 30-year-old living at home, but we, we understand that Mary's gracious love for him she was calling him to do what he was called to do. Someone said, we need to be careful of those we love as they guide us sometimes too closely. Now, John is writing this. He calls it the first of the uh, signs that Jesus did. There were miracles. But he said there are seven in his gospel. There are seven signs that point to the messiahship of Jesus. And this was the first one. It overlooked, interestingly enough, a joyful celebration. In fact, we read that some believe and they celebrated. They were converted and they laughed, if you will excuse that appliance to it. Bill Yancey, the well-known writer, 
talks about the gray ghost that many Christians carry with them, that they are so fearful of doing something too dangerous or doing something that is not scriptural, that they live in misery and can't have a good time. That's what God, God calls us to do. He calls us to celebrate life in the fullness. God loves his children to laugh. I'll say that again. God loves his children to laugh. If you were here when Steve Brown was here several weeks ago, you heard him say that he judges the spirituality of a church by the way they laugh. Because laughter is so important. Now there are four questions that come out of this when we look at what Jesus, who Jesus was. First off, where was Jesus? He was at a party. He was at a party having a good time. And if you think that was something out of the ordinary, remember in Matthew, the 11th chapter, when Jesus said, John came living a holy religious life, and you called him filled with the deacon. Because I eat with sinners and tax collectors, you call me a glutton. And so you see then the fullness of their, of their willingness to, uh, for, to laugh and to love and to know the life, the fullness of life that God talks about. Jesus was at a party. What was he doing? He was celebrating life. He was celebrating the fullness of there. He was helping out, helping out the party to make it a thing that was filled with laughter and joy and not something that was lost of spirit and hopelessness. How did he do it? He did it by the power of God. His mother said to the, the uh, slaves, go fill the buckets with water. One writer says he pictures Jesus sitting on the side with a few of his friends watching the face of the steward of the wedding and having a grin on their faces because they knew he would be surprised. When I think of Jesus sometimes, I think of him walking down the road with four or five of his disciples laughing and sharing the joy of life with their arm on the shoulder of the one next next to him. Or I think of them gathered around a campfire telling stories about life, celebrating who they are and what God has given them and how they can enjoy life. And the fourth question, what was the result? And we read that some believed and they celebrated. They were filled with joy. They were converted and they laughed because God gave them that joy. If your doctrine is long-faced and joyless, it's not Christian. It's, it's not from Christ. <coughs> he promises us Christ even in the face of our struggles. Rubens, the poet, I'm mean, the uh, painter in the 17th century, claimed that he could change the face of a child from one of desperation to one of joy with one simple stroke. And so does Christ change your life and my life with one simple stroke when we believe and when we trust, when we trust in him. Jesus offers forgiveness and offers love that we can find nowhere else. Where is the church in this story? You and I. I think we're the ones that are going, taking a taste of the wine and tasting it to the steward. The church taking joy to others. That's our call. Take joy and laughter. Take hope and life to others. 
others who are empty and hopeless. We are the church, God's people, sharing his good news and his joy. That's who we are and where we are. Jesus turned the water to wine. And it hurts to see people turning wine into water. Think about that. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks. Thanks that Jesus came and promised us abundant life. Eternal life, yes. An abundant life, filled and running over. Help us to know him better. He is our friend. Help us to live life with joy and laughter that Jesus alone can give us. We pray as we make our commitment. In his name, amen. A closing hymn, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. 837. Now go into God's world and know that God goes before you. And wherever you find yourselves, you're there by God's appointment, not by accident, but in the providence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Please remember to join us at the coffee hour and fellowship hall. <laughs>